In the first Magnificent Summer, the main character, Victoria Reeves, is an adolescent struggling with anxiety. In the book, Victoria describes her anxiety as a spiral where she'll have a thought and everything kind of spirals around that. And that's how it is definitely for me. It feels like a tornado, a spiral of frenzied thought. When I was a kid, I remember having panic attacks out on the track when we were doing 400 meter repeats. And I remember having panic attacks waiting for my mom to come pick us up if she was a few minutes late. I remember thinking, there's something wrong with me. I didn't quite understand anxiety. So I thought I would make a video about the top 10 things I wish someone had told me when I was an adolescent struggling with anxiety. Number 10, breathe. One of the things that helps me when I'm having a panic attack is breathing. And sometimes that's just breathing really deeply in and out. And sometimes it's something called a box breath where you breathe in for four, you hold for eight, you breathe out for four, and you hold for eight. When you concentrate on your breathing, it helps send signals to your body that everything's okay and that you're safe. And that helps dissipate the anxiety a little bit. Number nine, try to focus on the moment. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? One of the trademarks of anxiety is it's very future oriented. So a lot of the time when I'm struggling with anxiety, it's because I'm thinking about the future or I'm projecting into the future. Something is going to happen. There's going to be a disaster. When I was a kid and my mom was five minutes late, I would imagine that she had had a car accident and she would never come pick us up and I would be responsible for my brother and my sister. So focusing on the moment takes your brain from future thinking to just the present thinking. And then you can realize, oh, you're safe. There's not anything bad happening right now. And it calms your body. Number eight, use your mind to envision a calm place. This kind of goes back to breathing and focusing on the moment. But you can use visualization to imagine a calm place. For me, that was oftentimes a hammock that we had in our front yard. I didn't do this as a kid, but I do this today. And I will envision myself just stretched out in that hammock reading a book. That helps to calm the mind because you're imagining a different reality than what you have right in front of you. Number seven, do an activity that helps you feel calm. There are lots of different activities that can help you feel calm and you kind of have to find your own. I do a lot of running and that helps me feel calm. I do yoga, I do meditation, and those things help take my mind off my anxious thoughts and make me feel calmer. Sometimes it can be drawing, it can be reading. There are just a lot of different things that you can do to help calm your mind. Number six, yoga and meditation help. I know I just referenced this in the last one, but connecting with your mind and your body helps bring you into the present moment, which takes you out of future thinking, which is the hallmark of anxiety. So it can lead to a calmer mind and body as well. Number five, find an activity that helps express your anxiety, which in turn helps reduce it. For me, this is journaling. I journal a lot about the things that I'm worried about or things that are coming up that may cause me anxiety. I also make lists. I write anxiety into stories. So I use writing a lot to help with my anxiety. And there are a lot of different things that you can do to help with your anxiety. You can write it into songs or paint it into pictures or dance it into motion. So whatever form of artistic expression you enjoy, you can use it to express your anxiety. Number four, this will pass. When I'm in the middle of a panic attack or just a really anxious time, it feels like that's going to last forever. And there are times when a panic attack actually feels like almost like a heart attack and you think you're dying and you think the world is going to end. And when I was a kid, I don't remember anybody ever telling me, hey, this is just going to pass. You kind of learn it the more panic attacks you have. But if somebody had told me, maybe I wouldn't have believed them because I was a kid. But also it might have made it just a little bit easier knowing that it was temporary rather than this is going to last forever. Anxiety kind of works in a cycle, and some days we feel more anxious and other days we don't. And keeping that in mind actually helps with the anxiety because we're not anxious 
about being anxious. Number three, talk about it. When I was a kid, we didn't really have a vocabulary for a lot of the things that we have vocabulary for today. I just never told anybody about these panic attacks. I remember when I would have them around the track, a doctor actually diagnosed me with asthma which is just weird because I don't have asthma. I would do these 400 meter repeats and by like the eighth or ninth one, I'd have to be breathing in a bag. I would have a panic attack in the middle of them and I don't even know what caused the panic attack, but we had no vocabulary for it. I feel like if we had been talking about it and if we had talked to other people about it, it might've made it feel a little bit more normal because there are so many people who struggle with anxiety and just recognizing those things in each other and acknowledging that they exist is a very helpful thing. So don't be afraid to tell someone you're struggling with anxiety because there's nothing shameful about it. Number two, you're not dying. This is called a panic attack. I've mentioned that my panic attacks often feel like a heart attack. My left arm goes numb. My chest closes up. My throat closes up. It feels like I can't breathe. My whole body goes hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, and it really feels like you're dying. And I remember this as a kid as well. I don't know if I necessarily thought I was dying, but I thought that the world was ending, which is kind of the same thing. And I wish somebody had told me this is what a panic attack is. I didn't even know this until I was older. It's just so helpful to know that about yourself and to not think that you're dying because that contributes to the anxiety spiral. You just keep, you keep thinking you're dying and then you get more anxious and then you think you're dying even more and you get more anxious. So knowing that it's a panic attack and knowing what your panic attacks feel like is a very helpful educational piece that we all need. And the number one thing I wish someone had told me when I was an adolescent struggling with anxiety is that there is nothing wrong with you. So many times I would feel like I was the only one who had these feelings or who had these anxious thoughts. When you feel like you're the only one, you feel like there's something wrong with you. You should be something different. I would talk to people sometimes about what I was feeling, not necessarily saying I was anxious about it. They would come back with well-meant words like, this isn't going to last forever. You're going to get through this. You can do hard things. And while those sentiments are really important, it doesn't help when you're in the middle of an anxious cycle. One of the most important things that I feel like I can tell my kids and any kids who struggle with anxiety is that there's nothing wrong with you. I don't want you to feel like there's something wrong with you. I don't want you to feel like you have to hide this part of yourself because it is not a shameful thing, like I said before. When you feel like anxiety is something that's wrong with you, you tend to hide away from people or you hide that part of yourself. When we accept that anxiety is a part of us and when we know that it's nothing to be ashamed of, we're more likely to do the things that help us manage our anxiety. When I wrote The First Magnificent Summer, I revisited a lot of these moments where I struggled with anxiety as a kid. And one of the best things that we can do is know that we're not alone. So I hope that these tips have helped you. And I also hope that you'll pick up the book and read about the perspective of a 12-year-old kid who struggles with anxiety. And above all, be your magnificent self.